In this channel, I covered a lot of light painting techniques. However, I believe this is one of the best techniques that I used in my images so far. If you want to know why, keep watching till the end of this video. I hope you learned something new. I hope you enjoy. And without any further, and without any further ado, let's start with this tutorial. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. And to show this car as an example, this method works with the masks. So if I enter this mask right here, which is the exposure that I painted the light with, I'm going to click and hold Alt and then I'm going to click on the mask. As you can see, this adjustment layer, which is the exposure, will only affect the areas that are painted with the white color. I used this method not only to paint light, but also to paint shadows, as you can see on these areas. To get rid of this mess with all of these layers, I'm going to select the layers that are clipped to the car. I'm going to this bar right here that says pick a filter type. I'm going to click on selected. By doing that, Photoshop will only show the layers of the car and the adjustment layers that are clipped to it. Now let's hide all of these layers right here. I'm going to add a new exposure adjustment layer. And I'm going to add exposure. And then I'm going to click and hold control or command and I key. Now what I'm going to do is make sure these two colors are black and white. Then click on the shortcut Q. By pressing Q, now we are on the mask mode or let's call it the standard mode. Now I'm going to click Ctrl or Command and I key to inverse the mode or to inverse the selection and as you can see it's made everything red. That means that whatever we paint right here is going to be the selected area. Now I'm going to select a hard brush or let's make it hard and then make sure the color is white and let's paint on the areas that we want the light to affect. And you don't have to uh, take your time or be uh, specific, just paint. Uh, so black is to erase and white is to paint. Also make sure you paint the details on the other objects that exist in the same area, such as this windshield. You can control the hardness of the brush by clicking and holding Alt and then moving the mouse up and down. Looking at this area right here, I can tell that this object right here on the front will cast a shadow on this area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint with a black color right here with a hard brush. And then using the smudge tool, I can make this uh, selection uh, soft just by moving it up and down. Or you can use a soft brush. After finish painting a specific area, you can click Q and that will exit the standard mode and will select the area that you painted. And as you can see, this area that we painted is now selected or highlighted. All you have to do now is click on the exposure layer on the mask, make sure the white color is in the background and then click on delete on keyboard. And that will add the light on the area that you painted. Now let's go to the other areas and do the same steps.
One other good thing about this method or this technique that the new areas that you paint will not affect the first area. That means you can paint over the first area as much as you like. Now of course this is a mistake, but the good thing that you can erase it every time you make a mistake. What I'm doing now is I'm painting with a soft brush on the areas on that part of the car that are not supposed to be exposed to the sunlight or the source of the light. After you finish, click on Q and then the exposure and click delete. And then we are going to repeat the same step again and again till we paint all of the parts of the car. For the windows, I don't like to use the exposure adjustment layer, instead I use the hue and saturation to add just a bit of lightness. After that, I add a color balance adjustment layer, set it to color blending mode, and then I copy the mask from this adjustment layer by clicking and, by clicking and holding alt and then moving it to the other mask. Click yes to replace the layer mask and then you can add the color that you want or the color of the source of the light. You can also do that to the exposure adjustment layer that is highlighting the car. In my case it's going to be uh, cyanish blue because this is the color of the whole artwork one other thing is if you want to change the direction of the light and let's say perhaps for this car I have this mask which is highlighting these areas and I want to highlight the opposite areas which is this area right here all you have to do is click on the mask and then click and hold control or command and click the key I and the mask now is inverted and as you can see this area now is highlighted and this area is not anymore and of course you can adjust the exposure and all of the other details later if you liked what you've seen so far and you want to see more advanced tips and tricks and techniques such as this one also if you want to support me as an artist make sure to grab my digital landscape reloaded course the link is going to be down in the description. I did the same thing to the building. I added exposure adjustment layer and inverted the mask to black. I clicked on Q, Control I, and then I start to paint on the areas that are besides the windows. I didn't want to affect the windows. When it comes to areas like this, that are clothes or fabric or something like that, you can use the smudge tool in this way to decide where is the shadows and where is the highlights. And then for the glass materials, 
I use the hue and saturation adjustment here to add the lightness. And then color balance to add the color. Sometimes I change the hue and saturation blending mode to linear dodge. And I decrease the flow. On this model right here, I used this technique to paint the lights and the shadows. I use the smudge tool to move and smooth the selections. One other thing you can do is if you want to cast the shadow of a specific part and let's say this belt right here, I'm going to select it with the lasso tool. Make sure it's on zero featherness. And I'm going to select it very specifically with the holes and everything. And I'm going to right click and then transform selection. And with the wrap tool, I'm going to adjust the position of it to make it look like it's beneath, just like that. And then I'm going to click delete, and then I'm going to paint on the original shape of the belt. And this thing is for, and this thing is just for more details. And of course, one other thing I want to mention is you decide if the shadows are going to be harsh or soft that depends on the source of the light if it's a soft source the shadows are going to be soft but if it's a harsh light it's going to be harsh shadows sometimes i use the lasso tool just to paint on specific areas without affecting the other areas This is the before and this is the after. Now of course I'm not going to be taking my time with this light painting process because it's just for the sake of the tutorial. But if you are working on an artwork, you can take your time and get better results by adding more details and painting more areas. This is it ladies and gentlemen. I hope you learned something new from this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if one video about how to paint light in Photoshop was not enough, make sure to watch my latest video on this channel, which was also about how to paint light in Photoshop. Don't forget to leave a like on this video. Also subscribe to this channel and let me know what you think on the comments. I will see you in the next videos. Peace.